Hello and welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Bob and this is the 39th session of the Shadow Kingdom 5th Edition Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I'm joined here with Austin as Mary, Ryan as Mother June, Adam as Dr. Von Richter, and Nick as Maribel. Uh, quick announcements before we hop in. The next episode of this will be on Jade Kind Gaming presents the authority, uh, the observatory. Good lord, the authority, the authority. <laughs> the authority. I missed the Gaming chance. No, it's the, the authority. No, it's the observatory. Don't confuse them now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the observatory. There's links downstairs. Uh, there's already some <laughs> stuff over there. If you want to go and check it out, I highly encourage you to do so. All right. So, last we left off. Sunday, 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 Sunday. It's gambling day, folks. Mm -hmm. Which means, oh, and you guys increase the amount of gambling, uh, money that you put into gambling up to 8,000. Yep. Uh, uh, which will make it so that you get a, a more return. The more you invest into the gambling scheme, the higher the amount you get back. So it went from 5000 to 8000 so that's going to be an interesting uh, increase in pay. So, hopefully. Uh, is this? Have you guys done morning meeting for Sunday? We've done the meeting, yeah. and then I had them bring me the ink, in, and I tattooed and myself. tattooed yourself. That was as like, I skipped the meeting, yep. Yeah, that was like most of your morning. Yep. Ryan, you had... None of the rest of you guys have had your day, have you? No. Okay. So, we will start with Mother June. What does Mother June do on this glorious Sunday? Uh, before I leave, I'll, I want to um, want to talk to Abbott real quick. As, like, as the meeting after that wraps up. Okay. So, as the meeting wraps up and people start filing out, you grab Abbott and have him stay behind. Yeah. And I want to tell him, basically, the... Uh, thing about the baptism and that I was going to have uh, offer it to him and Agatha and she wants to have hers next uh, church day uh, when she can gather her family for it but I, w I wanted him to know that uh, it's something to offer him but if he wants to wait until after we've uh, reconciled with his wife I suppose and that we could also do that no, I think a fresh start would probably help me out. Okay. So I'd be happy to be one of the first baptized in your church. Alrighty. And then it's like, we'll pick a day and you can... Uh, well, we'll just do it the same day. Sure. I mean, just next Saturday sounds good. Okay, sure. Okay, so after your little chat with Abbott, which is pretty quick, maybe ten minutes. Okay. What you uh, gonna do next? Uh, well, quick question. Uh, since I've been around in the Horsehead District, does that district also have blacksmiths? Yes, that's uh, where Abbott's wife lives. No, no, no. She lives in the Balanced Blade area. She does. There, there's three blacksmiths in the Balanced Blade area. And oh, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, there probably is one just not as prominent. Okay. Yeah. Cause oh, you can go look. Well, I'm just wondering if I know. Uh, I mean, oh, you've right. seen people who have hammers and anvils. Okay. But you haven't seen a whole lot of dedicated blacksmithies. Yeah. It tends to be a profession you know of. It makes noise. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, there are people who hit things on hammers and anvils, but, like, a dedicated blacksmith is, I guess, up in the Okay. Up in the balance place, maybe. Well, we've got them there, and then we've also got them here in, uh... Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the 
first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the church uh, in order to pick up our horse and buggy. Okay. Your horse and cart. Yep. So I'm, I'm going to go there, and then I'm going to go and locate Fleetfoot. Uh, Fleetfoot would... Someday. He might be at the races, so... Oh, okay. Uh, and it's like, if, uh... He's awesome where... Yeah, he's not at the church. You can go and search him out, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's he like is a local fantasy Kentuckian. Mm-hmm. Medieval fantasy Kentucky. Uh, is uh, everybody like off today? I mean, not you? everyone. People work. Oh, okay. But he works for you, and there's no church functions going on. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll do that, and instead of if if I can't like if he's not at his house, then I'll. I mean, he doesn't just like sit there and wait for you to come and get him. No. You don't specifically ask him to do things, he might wander off and do other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, if I go and check his house and he's not there, then I'm not going to spend the whole day looking for him. Yeah, he's not at home. Okay. Then I will go ahead from there and then go to the blacksmith and the, um, the in tavern, the in, the red inn district. Okay. No, whatever, the home district. Go to that blacksmith. Yeah, I believe it's uh, Dan's Blades or something along those lines. Starts with a D. Mm. They had a break in there recently, you know. <laughs> I don't know. A couple weeks ago. Yeah, a little while back. I hope no one was hurt. It was a tragic thing. Tragic. Several dead city guard. Oh no. Who would do such a thing? Tragic. Uh, There's that one. There is another blacksmith in this zone as well. Did not get robbed. Well, that, that was the one that I went to that uh, made my yeah, yeah. wash bowl. Yeah, your basin. Yeah. Your portable, collapsible camping base. Okay, I'll go to them then. Okay. Yeah. They uh, also hooked you up with the potter who made your actual base. And mm -hmm. so walk in. Okay. Walk in, say hello. Hello. Hello, hello. And it's just like, uh, just make my. Uh, Way around uh, the uh, town, see if anybody's uh, up to <coughs> or needs anything. No, we're fine. It's just like uh, right, right now. Um, I'm looking for new people who would be interested in joining the church for our next sermon on Saturday. No, we're good here. Thank you. You get kind of the idea that she does not remember who you are. No. Then it's just like... You, you basically walked in and said, Hi, do you need any help? Mm -hmm. It's just like... Yeah, I think that's what he just... Yeah, I think yeah. that was the point, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't know who you are. Then she doesn't recognize me from... I mean, you're a person who came in and shopped with them a couple weeks ago that okay. one time. How dare they not inform such a... Secure and permanent memory. Burn they their don't establishment. that they're the NPC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're out there living their own life. Burn them down. What's <laughs> <laughs> the uh, mistake? Uh, You're okay. walking, don't you know me? I'm the main character. Uh, say, I, well, I thought, uh, I, I misunderstood. I thought uh, since this is our home district that we would have possibly I mean, already had a reputation. As far as what I mean, you do, but you're still one person amongst, uh, you know, several thousand. Okay. There, there's like five or six I, thousand people here. I promise you, if like the mayor or the governor of our town where we walked in 
I wouldn't recognize them. I have no idea who they are. Mm. <laughs> yeah, if a prominent member of a church walked in, I'm like, I don't know who that is. It's just some guy. Okay. So yeah, she just doesn't know who you are. Which is also good for us for an- anonymity's sake. Mm-hmm. It's like, <laughs> you are not... You and the group has been pretty gentle here with mm-hmm. what you guys have done and pushed for, so you don't really have... They are unaware that there's a gang operating in the city for most in this part of the city for most part. It's because we never could figure out where all the money was here. Also, when we're not gentle, we end up in trouble. <laughs> Only when you hang out, you totally murderize that they terrorize that entire family. Nothing bad happened at all. Mm. So then I'll go ahead and give the spiel that essentially that uh, I am the whatever mother cleric of the Church of Renette and that uh, we're currently working on trying to more or less uh, make sure that uh, people get to live in kind of a safe and free environment and that uh, Currently, some of the projects that we're working on is uh, helping people get uh, new starts in life if they've had a hard time, and uh, dealing with the fact that there are ne'er do wells who are abusing the trust of um, and property of uh, some of the people who live in some of the surrounding areas, and that. Uh, I'm just looking to make sure that everybody that I'm reaching out to help anybody that I can contact and that if you come across anything or anybody who would uh, need of su- such services or if you'd like to come and join us on Saturday to enjoy festivities and, uh, a feeling of togetherness with your uh, neighbors and all that that uh, you can come to our church that's located here um, uh, I mean, I appreciate the invitation, but I already am, uh, have my own religious services to observe. Okay. And it's like, well, say, uh, if you're so inclined, you can still come and spend some time with us, and I'll still, uh... I, I appreciate it, but no thank you. Yep. Well, just put an offer out there. If your church finds itself burnt to the ground and you need another one, you can just go. <laughs> you know where to find us. Yeah. Okay, I'll leave. Alright. Um, Did you go in there, like, in the carriage? The, the cart and yeah. horse? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm so you're just you're riding a cart and horse around the district. Yeah, I'm riding the cart and horse around the district. Um, it's good exercise for the horse. Mm. It's like we figured I'd make use of it since we already got it here. Um, I'm going to go to the Gilded Garden now. Okay. About half an hour later, you're there. All right. Uh, Horse and buggy is great. Super fast. Yeah. Because right. otherwise there's no reason to buy them. So I'm like, yeah, everything's really far. You need a horse. Uh, w- when I go into the Gilded Garden, I go and uh, find Belle. Right. Uh, you walk in through the front door, and there's several people uh, there, even at this early hour. It seems to be operating a bit more 24 hours than it used to. And uh, as you walk in, one of the girls is like, Mother June, are you here to see uh, Lady Belle? Yes. Oh, this way. Thank you. And she leads you back to the office and, uh, uh, please have a seat. I'll go and get her. Okay. Would you like any tea, coffee, no. anything? I'm good for right now. All right. And she leaves about 15 to 20 minutes later, Belle comes in, uh, dressed, but like, she comes in dressed, but not like a, a full to the nines. You get the idea that you woke her up, probably. And uh, is, uh, comes in carrying a cup of coffee and goes and sits down at the desk and says, Mother June, how can I help you? 
Oh, it's like a... Oh, I just uh, came in to see if I could uh, procure a bit of information, but... Um, On whom? Members of uh, the Stone Magnus Quarry, or any of their owners. Hmm. Any of their owners? I mean, I've had a couple of um, the people who work for them. People who work for the uh, the company itself. The Cory Magus come in. The Stone Mages. Okay. A couple of them are customers. Uh, the owner is probably a fair bit higher up and not exactly, uh, we're not be even slumming it with my girls. Mm-hmm. Oh, I imagine uh, somebody of his status could just call on somebody for any of that. House calls. Mm. Yes, probably. If All he right. doesn't have a dedicated mistress or two. But uh, just trying to see what I can procure as far as that information. As far as here, are you kind of uh, running around the clock now? Yes. I found that if I expanded the clientele to some of the more nocturnal peoples and expanded the girls and had some of the nocturnal ones stay up during the day and the day and the diurnal ones stay up at night, we could uh, make an interesting cross section of people who want the familiar and the exotic. Hmm. So night girls serving day folks and vice versa? Well, some of them. Obviously, we have some girls who are just up at daytime, some are up at night, depending upon their personalities. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'd rather have someone who's sunny in the morning and then dour at night. You might have noticed I'm expanding the bar. Isn't it illegal to sell booze in a brothel? It is. I was also going to say, I remember they have drugs here. You yeah. can get in for, with drugs here. <laughs> or at least find out their supplier and maybe go murder some drug dealers. Let's go prohibition some real speakeasies. Hey, yo, this isn't actually booze. This is a powdered uh, extract that when combined with water makes booze. And we tell our customers very specifically not to mix them because that'd be illegal. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we, don't, we don't watch their tables when they're doing it, though. Mm-hmm. Privacy, you understand. Uh, well, that kind of that kind of job privacy is required. Yeah, I'd say Wolfgang was able to get drugs from them here, right? I don't know if Wolfgang told you about that, Dom. Oh, no. Hmm. Obviously, Wolfgang didn't. Um, Ludwig was rather distracted that day. Cause that was that was the day where, like, dude, where where where's my badger? <laughs> yeah, dude, where's my badger? <laughs> Alright, so I might not even know about the drugs uh, that they're selling here. I mean, it's like, uh, but expanding the bar. You went, you didn't notice. Good. And it's like, expanding in, like, what way? We have one. Oh, okay. It's just like, hmm. Like, it's... That's a good way of uh, getting the uh, clients to be a bit more generous. Mm, if they know what to order. Hmm. Yeah, and it's like, well, that's another source of revenue. So, uh, is there anything that you can get me about uh, the quarry? I want to know about um, essentially the contract that's run in the place. I can get you a couple of names of people who work there, but... Okay. I mean, that's something. Let me look at my files. As I look at my files. <laughs> she goes and uh, walks out of the room. And uh, comes back a little later and says there's two who come in 
One is a Sid May, and the other is an Ingrid Kent. Ingrid? Yes. A woman? Yes, they, they come here too. Okay. We have boys and girls, and everything in between. Ingrid? Woman? No, no, I just really mean parents. <laughs> 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 it's just a boy named Ingrid. A bard. Cool, talented, cool. talented bard. Just Wears black all the time. There's a mean, mean parents. Mean parents. I mean, with their new bar, he might find himself rolling around in the mud and the blood and the beer. Mm. <laughs> all right. It will probably the mead. Beer is expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're going to keep it secret, they should have the good stuff, though, right? Come on! <laughs> Uh, I go ahead and pick up our payment for the week. It's already been given. Uh, not, not to. Not to you, but it has already been paid. Oh, okay. Because yeah, doesn't um, Spartacus just Spartacus give us our cut? Yeah, Maybe. Spartacus kicks up all the money. Yeah, okay. We finally got him on that, so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's yeah, see. that's why you guys get just like huge sacks of money once a week. Good yeah, Spartacus. Did we get any money this week? I no, think that'll we be tomorrow. Usually you usually get it Monday because he picks it up today. Oh, okay. And it's also payday from the gambling house, so might as well get all that together. Okay. Yeah. Because you can't get the money that is available at the end of the day, the beginning of the day. It's not available yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright, then I'm, I'll go ahead and leave there. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Uh, well, today was planning on essentially going around doing church propaganda to blacksmiths. So that's what I'm really interested in doing. Okay, well, you know where three more blacksmiths are. Okay. Four. Please. Blacksmiths. Please. Please get Abbott's wife to come to the church so that she'll be there when he's... <laughs> Literally, when, when you're telling him to get baptized, I'm like, oh, it'd be so funny to go invite her, but my character has no way to know. <laughs> yeah, man, it's proof that he's turned his life around. He's, he's found God. I'm sure she'll be, she'll be so happy. He won't be bad at all. Oh, she's gonna be so mad. So bad. So mad. So bad. She's gonna be so mad. just need blacksmith allies, so that's why you're trying to get them into your church. Yep. <laughs> I do like that occasionally I can see that you are still trying to play an evil character. I don't know what a blacksmith is going to do for you. She's playing a confidence artist. Huh? I, I want to get blacksmith so I can get people that will make uh, the gang weapons for the jeep. Oh. I mean, would there be a better way of doing that? Uh, if you made, uh, if you, Spartacus didn't already have a logistics lieutenant, you could have gotten a blacksmith for that. But he has one. Yeah. Which exactly one of you has met. Well, I can't do anything about lieutenant uh, assistance. Since that's just kind of a level thing. Yeah. Once you take over the next area, you might be able to find one. Right. Uh, and haven't we really already outfitted the game uh, much of what we're going to do in this time? We intend javelins? to get more people. True. <laughs> and we can always improve their stuff. I mean, basically nobody's got any long range. They have uh, the javelins. Long range. Mm. At this point in time, for that you need Fletchers. Mm -hmm. Like the family, or Fletchers, Polters, Leather Strippers, and all sorts of work. Mm. Oh yes, an expert of tying on things to other things, because <laughs> all those things have to be put together. 
I'd say during my time when I was in the uh, slums that day after I had to do damage control, was I ever able to figure out a place in the slums that we would be able to have privacy? Like an abandoned warehouse or building or anything? Or just a place that's only... No, because you spent your time proselytizing. You didn't really look for a warehouse, per se. Yeah. You were, like, going into other people's houses and meeting. You weren't actually looking for a meeting space inside of these slums. You were inviting the people in the slums to your church. Oh, I thought I was talking to them while in the slums district. You were, but you were meeting in other people's houses. Yeah. Well, is there any place that's, like, only populated by people who are my followers? I mean, not wholly, no. Oh, okay. I mean, you were basically going to people and being like, hey, do you think any of your friends would be interested in this multi-marketing, multi-level marketing scheme? You're going, like, from house to house. You weren't, like, going from door to door next door. Because you were doing stealth propaganda. Yeah. Stealth proselytization. <laughs> right. Very interesting, but all right. Um, hmm. So you met with that. You met with the Gilded Girl. The Gilded yeah. Garden. Sorry. Okay. So if, if I were to... So I don't think that it would be worth my time to try to go and uh, recruit essentially blacksmiths into my church. Uh, because that's something that's kind of lieutenant based uh, I'm making you aware that it is something that you could recruit into your system that way there is you could of course find one and bring it into the church as well I'm not saying you can't I'm just saying that if you wanted to get one that was like guaranteed cheaper items and stuff like that that you like if you wound up pulling one into your gang as an upper level member of the gang you would just get passive weaponry and uh, equipment for your people. You can pull them into the church and try to get discounts that way too, of course. I'm not telling you you can't. Also, you can just get someone into the church to get an idea for them as personality and such and then look at getting them into a position later. That's also true. It might be a good way to vet them. I just Because yeah. the gang mechanics are a lot of stuff that I have written down that you guys can't read through because it would give away too much information about future events. It would let us know what we're supposed I, to be doing. It, it, <laughs> well, I, mm, I'm it, just kidding. I, I try to make sure to let you know that there is ways that you could incorporate them into. I didn't want you to yeah. walk in behind into that. Okay. So that's just additional information you use it as it, you will. Uh, so then I'll go ahead and spend my time doing that, trying to recruit people to come to the church so that I'll be able to future bet them to join the gang at some point? You can try. Okay, then I'll do that today. Okay. Involving roles to look less like a crazy, you know, Jehovah's yeah. Witness. Right. Well, well I she, mean, it, she's supposed to be charismatic. Yeah, yeah it, you just walked in and, like, to a place when I'm sure they know me. <laughs> Which well, is a very Mother June thing to do in this well, area. I, I did, yeah, I, did, I didn't know that that was... I, I didn't know what my level of fame is, basically. Oh, yeah, most people don't. Okay. Like, yeah. a lot of places you go, people know exactly who you are because you spend a lot of time wandering around in the areas where most of your followers are. Okay. It's not surprising that you walked into a place, like, still in the same town, but you know, you, church people don't live here. They don't know. Okay, yeah. These people go to a completely I, different uh, church. I, I, the conception of, like, where I'm known versus where I'm not known is still unknown to me. Yeah. So... That, that, that's usually how it works. Yeah. I mean, you're pretty well known in places where you proselytize a lot. You don't proselytize a lot in the... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wait for them to say my name, I guess. Crafter part of town. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could do that then. I could be doing uh, work in the crafter part of town. Some club be going around looking for... Yeah, because you pretty specifically stayed away from a lot of them due mm -hmm. to the casing them out to rob them. Mm-hmm. Like, you walked through the area proselytizing, but you didn't actually talk to the people working. Okay. Then, yeah, I'll focus on proselytizing to people in crafting districts of the zones that... Okay, so of both the uh, horse's head and the red horse yeah. zones. Okay. Right. You can absolutely... It's going to take most of your day just due, because of traveling even with the carriage and all that, but you certainly can. All right. I'll, I'll use enhance ability when I talk to people as well. Okay. 
Uh, you probably only need to use two of them because a lot of your day is going to be taken up with traveling. Sure. And like, yeah, they're not next to each other like the other ones were. They were more spaced apart. There's not like a billion crafters. Out there is just people who live in a subdivision <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, go ahead and roll for recruiting crafters. So, just persuasion. Yeah. So, twenty-four. And 18. Okay. Uh, as you're going around, you do go into uh, the... Uh, the shop that you guys attempted to rob. Yeah, that's fine. And talked to the lovely half elven woman there at the counter. And she, you know, talks to you for a while. She's kind of heard of you. And she agrees that she might want to come and check out your church. Very good. That would be a harder sell for her cousin, as he already does have a deity that he worships as part of his forging. I understand. Yeah. I mean, you ain't got to be one man devotional. Polytheism is totally options. Yes, but he is. Yeah. Is polytheism a big thing here? Have we I noticed? Mean, any place with multiple gods generally is. Yeah, it is, but people tend to, like, give most of... Like, yeah, on probably a, only paying one church. Yeah, and, and usually on the day when most people go to church, they're going to go to their church, not someone else's. Mm for a part of the religion that doesn't affect their livelihood. Okay. Uh, so most people have a main but give lip service to the others because they know the real I mean, when, and can be smited. <laughs> well, it's more of when something falls within their realm. Yeah. It's like if you have a pregnant wife, you would go pray to a maternity god. Okay. Yeah, yeah, or a fertility god if you're trying to get, you know... <laughs> pregnant or trying to grow your feet. Nah, man. You go, you, you're, you're going, if you're a crafter, you'd probably go pray to a god of crafting or if you're or the god of the forge or something of that nature. Like you you go to the god for the I action you want. You wouldn't go to the goddess of the fields to pray for a safe trip at sea. That's nah, man. dumb. Nah man, your wife's pregnant. You go straight to the god of the forge. She's got a bun in the oven. May it be crafted with grace and perfection. <laughs> Our, uh, May it come yes, out our old lady of perpetual combustion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, nah, man, go all in. Briga, the flame who burneth bright. Just get some of those old school. I have like nine portfolios. Some of them don't make sense together, but screw it. Down I mean, for the combined gods. <laughs> this is a fun tangent. However, if you want to read a book series that has deities where this actually happens and you do, they do interact with them, and it's hilarious. Uh, Spellmonger series. I highly recommend it. They're long books. Totally worth it. They are long. <laughs> they, yes. That man gets wordy. Yeah, the, Our Lady of Perpetual uh, uh, Combustion is the fire goddess in well, that series. To, to, to hoity toity wizards. That's what they call her. Yeah. Books are hard. Yeah. <laughs> books are hard. I mean, <laughs> if you're interested in D&D, you probably like not reading see books. how many D&D <laughs> books you have. I don't want to hear it from you. Books are hard, man! You've read all of these cover to cover. Well, not, not on all the shelves. Only like, that shelf. Don't worry about it. <laughs> books are hard. They're textbooks, bro. <laughs> Those are easier than novels. Like, no, novels have fun. <laughs> yeah, but they're easier because the way they're broken up and the reason the books are harder is because of my attention deficit. Yeah, novels are too. They're called chapters. Yeah, that's not, that's not within the single page. It depends Text on how, it, textbooks are broken up within a single page. Oh, I, I've got some. Uh, I've got some authors who like to put a lot of chapters in their books, like an absolute ton. Yeah, like one book, the road. One, one book, four hundred chapters, no problem. The Road was a book that managed to hold my attention. I hated The Road. <laughs> I hated the movie so much that I'm like, I'm not reading the book because the movie annoyed me. I was upset because back when there, I was heard about the movie, it was not available in our local theater, even though they had a poster for it. So I went and got the book and read the book until it came out on Blu-ray. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> certainly a choice. So that's uh, Mother June's Day. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and we're going to go ahead and go to your rib thing. So, yeah, uh, Maribel. I'm going to spend my morning, going to go to either a bookshop or all the way over to the library district to get myself some primers on investigation, like Investigation 101. Investigations for dummies? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I found The Secret to So Can You by uh, Beauregard is on one of the shelves. Exactly. Just some primers <laughs> to get my foot in the door. <laughs> That, that's that a thing joke. is wine family? <laughs> You'd think so. That's a joke just for Adam because none of the rest that's of them watch fair. There, are, there are certainly people there that can I, get I'm talking... Comment below if you get the joke. Yeah, but that's what I do with my day. Then I'll go back and play with Huxley in the backyard while reading. That looks a lot like not playing with <laughs> your No, that's, that's me literally throwing a ball while reading a book. Uh -huh. Okay, uh... <laughs> So, are you are you going to the library or are you going to buy a book? I'm going, which is closer, the book? It, cause They're the both in the university district. Oh, okay. I just need to know if you're going to the library or not. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I go to a bookstore first. That's where they sell books. <laughs> okay. Uh, you walk in and you just say, hey, I need a book on investigating. Yeah. Investigating how to. <laughs> uh, the guy looks and goes, Yeah, man. Excellent. Come with me. <laughs> and he leads you back over to the thing. He goes, So, are you like in uh, Criminology 104? Or. And he like shows you a bunch of textbooks. Yeah. He goes, Are you just like amateur interested? Amateur interested. Work my way up. But basically, yeah. Okay, uh, then you'll probably want this. It's a philosophy book, but it delves into the, like, realities of truth and how one should seek it. It's a good place to start. I'm looking more for practical, like, if I'm looking for a thing, how best I'd go about finding it in a room. I mean, you can't run before you walk, man. Fine, give me that and what I said. <laughs> Okay, here's the philosophy book, and here's the textbook for 104. Yeah. Go ahead and buy those and be on my way. Okay, 50 gold. Textbooks, man. Textbooks, man. <laughs> Goddamn textbooks, man. I'm now back down to one gold. Yeah, which, uh, you know, the, the philosophy book was five silver, mm -hmm. and the textbook was the rest of it. I like to imagine that you'll get the most use out of the philosophy book. That's why I bought them both. <laughs> you can't lose. It was 40 gold. 50. 50. 50. Yeah, it's a university library textbook. Those professors got to make money somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's a feudal society. Those professors, generally speaking, they wouldn't have to. They'd be willing on huge-ass stipends. I mean, if you wish to delve into the pay structure of a university professor, you certainly can. I mean, we could ask Doomstare if we really wanted to know. I have his book because he needed a book in order to... <laughs> <laughs> now that he has the book, does the following professors continue to sell his book? Or do they each write their own book? Would you like to go to the U university district and check it out? Not until I feel like we can burn it down. Burn down the system, man. But that's how I roll for the rest of my day. My Molly? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, give me an... Hmm. So are you, which book are you starting with? You know what? He made a good... I'll take the high university students thing. I'll go with the philosophy one first. Excellent. It, you can roll a wisdom check to see about your comprehension levels instead of an intelligence one. <laughs> Mr. Druid Man. So or Mr. Druid Lady. Yes. Uh, 18. Okay. Uh, even with Huxley's uh, distraction, you're throwing a ball and he's just happy that you're paying attention to him for once. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> little, little shade on the down low there. 
Well, if someone's a perpetual cat owner and doesn't understand that dogs like to be with you. <laughs> uh, cats are great. Yeah, for kicking. No. Also, no. I was obviously joking. I'm just allergic to them, <laughs> so I have negative feelings because they are poison. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're poison. So <laughs> I also do not like poison. Nature. <laughs> you have to mentally psych yourself out so you can't love the incredibly adorable kittens. <laughs> Listen, I, I love them on TV. They're great there. Mm. I dislike them when they're in person because they know. <laughs> it's like, oh, he's allergic. Let's go spread poison directly in his eyes. It's like, first thing I'm going to do is jump on the allergy riddled person's chest, bump my face into theirs, isn't that adorable, and then shove my bum in their nose. <laughs> That and does sound like, like a cat. Get all indignant <laughs> when they get take you off. <laughs> I'm just thinking about on TV and it's like the camera adds 20 pounds or something. <laughs> it's like, that's a big cat. Well, they, they're usually longer than big. <laughs> big Cats tend to. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, that, that weird tangent, but yes. all right. <laughs> so I, I'm comprehending some philosophy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. find the object, you must okay. put polymorph into the object. So, you spend uh, part of the day, and you really don't get, you spend most of the day doing that, but you don't get very far into the book, just because you're, like, the idea of a philosopher's education, or a proper education, is a new concept to you. My you were, former book. like, homeschooled, not uneducated, yeah. but just unaware of the possibilities of different learning and different learning styles. The only teacher you've had outside of your family, you want to murder. So, no, I want to socially destroy. <laughs> so, you're... It's very interesting for you, mm -hmm. like, this different approach of, like, actually sitting down and reading. And it, it's you seem to get something from it. That's good. sense for what you're doing, that you weren't investigating, you were learning investigating. <laughs> <laughs> very different. Very different, very weird. Uh, sleepwalking? Yeah. Alright. Uh, anywhere in particular? No, nah, just around. Okay. Not specifically around the balance blades where they saw your real form? No, they didn't. You were probably yeah. your, your mm -hmm. face changed. Yeah, you were flying uh, Steve Buscemi? Yeah. Still flying. Just another mage floating around. <laughs> Just a mage. Nothing to see here. Truly, mage. You can't spray fire on them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that seems to be. Well, you have more of your day. Um, I just spend time in my room. Um, you turn to the scene Trying time. to, um, learn. How I may be able to, uh, at this point, possibly manipulate the Alter Self spell and try and improve on it. Okay. So you spend time researching. Yeah. Practicing, mucking about, whatever I can do with it, yeah. Staying indoors. <laughs> For reasons. It's like you should return to scenic crime, otherwise how will you know what they're doing? Okay. So I don't care what they're doing until I think I'm powerful enough to take it over. Until I own that library and I close it to the public. <laughs> And, and I staff it with only zombies! <laughs> <laughs> and freaking out and screaming gets you turned into one. Because it's a library. Be quiet. They <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> we took their tongues, too. Quiet as the grave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make a bunch of that guy from Hocus Pocus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Never seen Hocus Pocus. It's pretty good. It's, it's a cool classic. 
I think of it as being good, but it's been so long since I've seen of it, I really don't know. It's Everyone brings it up, and every time I go to watch it, I'm like, but Practical Magic's there. Why would I watch anything besides Practical Magic? It's the superior choice. Or whatever. There's like, yeah, another what's, thing you can comment one? about uh, below. The craft? Yeah, the craft. Oh, that's the craft the is great. That's the other one? <laughs> you did me wrong, now I'll suffer. Rule of three. Yep. Today is a lot of tangents. <laughs> it is a lot of tangents. Would you like to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Mary, yep. it is about seven, eight o'clock, or six o'clock, whenever you uh, come out of your trance. What doing? Well, Six uh, o'clock is usually, because you basically start walking at ten. Yeah, we don't really have anything else to do, so I laze about. <laughs> Back to the bar. I do my duty, I do a patrol, which I did already, so now it's time for my time off. Okay. So, uh, the evening passes, unless anyone wants to do anything? Um, Next. if I get done, then I'll head over to, uh, the gambling. I want to watch them gamble. Yeah. Okay. Play some music there, get the people hyped. Do, 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 do. Spend your what? money. Do you losers want to live forever? Okay. You walk in and the bartender recognizes you and sends a couple of uh, your boys over to clear you a spot if you want to watch the people gambling. Yeah. Uh, they clear a corner table for you and bring it, come out and set you down and go out. There's a runner sent out and comes back and you have like little dainties and tea and all that set before you. Very nice. So, yeah, I'll sit and watch and see how uh, things are going on this side. See if uh, Abbott needs any help. Abbott seems to be running it quite uh, well. You're used to kind of a mousy, cowardly man most of the time. Mm -hmm. And when you see him up there, there's just an air about him that it is someone doing something that they're extremely competent in. Yeah, he's in his element. It's like when you see him working on books, and all of a sudden the mousiness and the fear falls away, and all it is is just a very intelligent man doing something he's very good at. And that's how he is up there doing, uh, taking the bids and doing all that. He's got it down to a mechanical precision. Yeah, he has a very good patois. So... You watch uh, the bidding mm -hmm. and all of that for the evening? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'll do for the night. Before okay, so you watch that and then the, the bidding comes to an end. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Abbott walks into the back and starts working on the books. Just uh, coming. It's like uh, good work tonight. How, uh, how did it go? Um, I'm gonna have to check, but we didn't lose money. Alright, sounds good to me. Good job, Abbott. Thanks, boss. What a waste of a gambling day where I have a natural one, but I'm afraid to go outside to be able to use it. <laughs> <laughs> that, what, that big spender right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Him. What's he do? He fails. Okay, so you guys all bed down for uh, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Well, now it's Monday. Yes. Ryan said Sunday, though, so it had to be done. <laughs> Monday, Monday, Monday. I think there's not the same ring to it. No, you dirty. Computers are not your friend. Okay, let's start over, shall we? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Whoops. Sorry, I know this is just absolute <laughs> dead I know. for everyone involved, but I uh, oh. have a bunch of notes here that I didn't actually tally. That's fine. So You're doing math for our money. <laughs> We're going to get money, guys. Money is coming to the table, guys. So, mm, theoretical money. What do you guys think? Do you think it would be better use of our time to either try to pick uh, Gustav off or... Uh, focus on getting rid of balance blades at this point. So, as you guys are having your meal and discussing this, um, uh, Spartacus comes Wolfgang in. Shows up there. Okay. So, as you guys are sitting down for your meal, the door opens, and not a stranger, but relatively surprising to see them. So, you mm-hmm. enter as Wolfgang. Yep. Badger with you? Uh, no. Did you go and get a uh, Yank? No. Okay. Well, Yank has had plenty of time around. He knows what to do. If he's failing to do it, that's on him. I'm not his keeper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. There's a, your usual spread before you, but it's not your spread. It's Richter's. That's fine. I'm used to that. As uh, Spartacus walks in, he stops and says, Sorry, if I had known you'd been here today, I would have gotten you a different drink. Very kind, but it is it is just fine. You so I will in. likely be here moving forward. The doctor has gotten careless. Probably needs to be kept indoors. At least in controlled regions, not publicly seen. Well, that's between you and him, I suppose. He walks over and puts a sack on the table and goes, Our cut for this week is a little light than usual because we had the doctor making acid. No, I already paid for that, though. Yes, but no, you but can't we, make money. Yeah, but that's yeah, not adding money from you. Yeah. yeah, we had suppressants, not money this week from that. Yeah. So you... you oh, had, that, that's you, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The doc didn't actually make anything for sale. Right. So uh, he puts the sack in front of you. Okay. There, just on, in the middle of the table. And Abbot just goes, it's uh, 1,915 gold. We had a very good take at the races yesterday. Very good. Alright, so that, that's uh, the total from regular uh, income and then what we got from yesterday is? What that's the girdle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gilded girdle. Or the gilded garden. Garden. I No, I do that all the time. It's the gilded garden and uh, the gambling, but not uh, uh, Doomsdayer, because he didn't right. actually produce any income. Yeah. But you'll note it's almost as much as last week when he was producing. Okay. And is that just our cut? That's your guys's cut. Yeah, they already take their. Money. Yeah, you have to I was just confirming. It. Yeah, yeah, I cut. Uh, when it feels like a big number, I have to check before I. <laughs> it was almost nine thousand gold. Before uh, I department cuts, yeah, 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 because yeah. the way you guys, the way I set up the gang, so you don't have to micromanage everything and don't have to go and finance everything, is that it finances itself unless yeah. you want specific items. So everything has a percentage of the total take pulled from it to finance them. Yeah, which is why like Spartacus is super useful right now, is because he has 
a relatively small area of responsibility, but a larger uh, percentage than any other division. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So they're not just being jerks with the money that they have. They're <laughs> No, you're yeah. getting uh, results from everything. <laughs> and I've been like, I sit on cash. You know, that's why uh, Spartacus in general is like, don't worry, you don't really have to pay for a lot of things you ask for. He finds ways and just gets it to you. But he's got a very large logistics network for what he does. Mm -hmm. Well... That uh, would uh, put our party funds up to the point to where we would be able to uh, put the full 10000 in the gambling if we wanted to basically just have that and very little else. Well, I would like at least some degree of stipend. I've had to put money into replacing things that Richter has lost. Yeah, I, I'm down on mine too. Though no, certainly willing to put at least half of it into it. Right. Knock it up tonight. Well, we pulled that three back out, or no, no, no leave that in. No, you in there. Yeah, okay. you put it in. So it's uh, currently the gambling uh, is at uh, eight thousand. Yeah, and it was at ten. It can go over. Okay. Like the higher you, the more money you throw into it, the more money you can get back from. I'm sure, at a certain point, we'll need a different, bigger venue. But <laughs> yes, there is a cap at the venue, but. Uh, and there's diminishing returns. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's, like, accessible wealth within the area, too. I mean, I guess technically, like, the theory craft of the place is we're taking over region by region. Eventually, we would take over the circle. And that would be the venue. <laughs> yeah, you totally could. And you all can have multiple gambling halls. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say... If we feel that saturated, the better area would balance blades and take over their thing. But we've put a lot more work into the slums, even though we have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Except murder Gustav hope that solves problems versus makes more problems. <laughs> hey, man, it can't hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, we know him, we know he's working with the knight, they're keeping the people down because of them wanting control over the quarry. And then there's also that extortium that we haven't really had a look at yet. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the bounds of blades, I don't know. Do you see that as like a more achievable thing? I'm not sure if it's necessarily more achievable. Although, of course, acquiring that does increase uh, our numbers in potential. And if we manage to do that, that might aid in any actions taken against those in the slums that need uh, display of force. I don't know. If we're going to deal with the balance plates, do we want to go in there take, like, literally go up to their chief, say, hey, we have an offer, combined with us, expand our territory, and you will head it up, but or go and train to murder. You might want to try diplomacy first. I and like the him. idea of cutting off the head and letting whoever's next in ally with us. Hmm. Of course, they want power. But they're not used to maintaining it themselves. They're used to having someone above them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was kind of uh, similar to what uh, basically happened when Quentin went down. Um, and it's like... I don't know how we would be able to get the lay of the balance blades, whether or not the, they we, would... We see, send Molly and Hammerstein in there to find out who the leader is. Uh, as far as, like... I was more curious about their disposition to where the whether they would crumple like a house of cards after their leader's gone, or if they would be like whatever undyingly loyal to the blade name or something like that. Why do they have to get rid of the blade name? 
It describes the weapons they've been trained with, which they already have. Why would they not continue to use that? Um, we don't need all of the gangs and factions we control under one uniform name. It's harder to track us down. Uh, I'm just talking about whether or not they're easily controllable after the fact. I don't know, that would be more something you go hang out there and just get a feel how they feel talking to them. To be fair, you have a silver tongue. Mm -hmm. Go in. Speak to them. Ask first. Go ahead. Be kind about it. Maybe they'll love your god. Seems arbitrary. But people just do. Oh, what she can do for everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, from really what I gather, until you started doing things for her, she couldn't do shite. Yeah. But that's just me. By the way, can I get 200 gold out of that? Because it would be, what, 500 each if we were to take everything? Split four ways? Yeah, no, they're 200. Divide 200 to each of us and then put the rest of it towards that pot? Yeah. Yeah. It's like I can give everybody 200. Who doesn't know what they're doing? As <laughs> <laughs> you just yell at your lieutenants. Oh, uh, let's see here. While I do that, let's see here. I'm sorry, I finally have to give this character personality. He's taking a front role. <laughs> <laughs> you were just supposed to be a menacing figure in the background. Those roles switched. <laughs> All right, James is still working on the guards for the slums. Doomsday is still working on acid. Uh, Stephen Abbott already looked into the quarry. Yeah, that's back that was back Saturday. Uh, I think Steve Abbott and Mary. Molly. Molly, sorry. Don't have anything to do right now. Well, can we have Steve look into, uh... Well, he, he was uh, looking into how we interact with nobles, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, into what, getting invites for the nobles from the nobles, like how we would interact with this guy because we don't have any concept of it. Oh, you want etiquette classes? I suppose. Well, also you know, like in the process, do I just go knock on their door? Yeah, it's like how do I send an invitation to talk to a noble? <laughs> yeah, it's like how how do we get in contact with the Venice? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Any public events he'd attend that we could attend. Okay, so Stuff you want like him to look into etiquette classes and public events, or do you want to have uh, Molly and Hammerstein look into public, well, Hammerstein specifically to look into public events, or? I think at least one of them, perhaps, we were saying, going into Bowen's Blades, just to get the lay there of who's... Okay, so you're splitting Molly and Hammerstein up? Well, yeah. If they think they can handle things separately, then yes. Yeah, so I guess... Well, one's a talking person, the other one's an arsonist. <laughs> right. <laughs> you say as Molly just kind of looks at him and goes, What are you burning down? <laughs> He's like, Are you fucking with me? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch that. You've got skills, girl. Never hide it. Other than relief from anyone not in this room, but you know, here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Molly to find the Balance Blades leader, right? Yeah, well, yes. And Molly. Or at least the public facing leader. Yes. Yes. Who who within the blades they think is the leader. Yeah. Or just who people on the street think is in charge. Those blades people are pretty pretentious. He probably walks around with a crown on. Uh Hammerstein looks at uh Motley and goes, Hmm? She's like, What? He goes, Mm hmm. She's like She pulls out like a bag and hands it to him, and he lifts it. Goes, also mine. 
She takes out a smaller purse that looks relatively fashionable and gives it back to him. He goes, when did you notice? And he goes, I just assumed. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to need outfits and so will all of you. Um, Spartacus, you have the measurements. Spartacus is like, yeah. Pulls out um, a notebook and starts writing them down. May need to retake. Because mm. theoretically he would have different ones for <laughs> Looks like but you um, if you go to Howells, uh, oh. they have both. Okay. He writes down measurements for everyone else and goes, there you go, and goes, excellent. Um, religious leader, merchants, maid. That's how we're going to play it. I mean, I am a lord. Do you have a bit of pedigree? I am Air Wolfgang. It is Lord Wolfgang. <laughs> yeah, but do you have proof? I'm a lord in a different country that has no power here. Yes, that is true. Fallen house, but still with dignity. I think I can do something with that. That describes it well enough. <laughs> Preferred motif. Uh, Adam does not understand your question, so I, I have trouble answering it. <laughs> uh, do you have? Does uh, Wolfgang have preferred colors? Um, or something that he'd like to wear, or brooching, or something of the house that he is from? Like Eric or it, it, Spider? It's, it's a wolf. Like, <laughs> I, I swear, like iconography, like the what would be the the crest? It okay, is wolf iconography. Hmm. Wolf. Maybe wolf. something for. I'll figure it out. You'll look great. You'll cut a fine Fire figure. Return. Uh, Check. yes. Well, no, I have an idea. And he what? just kind of goes, oh, this is fun, <laughs> as he wanders out. You get the impression that him and Molly share something. They like dolls, and mm -hmm. they turn people into them. They wish to dress all of you. I, mm. I also <laughs> imagine just a leather jacket with a giant wolf head on the back, just embroidered in like a patch. <laughs> just howling wolf head. Probably not for that part. Yeah. If, yeah. Going, <laughs> if you were going to take over a ship on the sea, 100%. <laughs> Which, you know what? There's a wharf district, and I think another district next to it that looks like probably also aligns with the dock, so you know what? We might get that chance. So yes, as uh, uh, Hammerstein wanders off to get you all things and look up the Noble's social calendar for the next upcoming weeks and Molly goes off to look for the leader of the Balance Blades and any other information she can get on their mm -hmm. gang and lieutenant structure. Abbott uh, is free, I believe. Uh, can we have Abbott look up who does just resurrections or dead raising and how much that costs? Spilled. Did something happen while I wasn't here yesterday that I need to know about? Uh, that guy we were trying to rescue ended up dying. If we could get his body back, I just handed you him to you. Well, he did not escape well. Yeah, he just ran right into a bunch of people with knives instead of running away. Hmm? What's this about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think so? You walk into a room with a bunch of people with knives. We were outnumbered six to one. You run away. But apparently he thought, um, I'm going to pick a fight with the lady behind the bar first. And then run away when that fails. So he, he, he and then when he ran, he just didn't succeed in running, so he got caught and killed. Well, I hope this resurrection you're thinking of is out of personal pocket, because he does not seem valuable to us. Yeah, he's definitely a moron. <laughs> well, just for future, so Wolf, or uh, Ludwig doesn't have to spend multiple weeks on someone... If we just know that price out ahead of time and who to go to. Well, if he needs to, it's fine. Yeah. For at present time, he still occupies the majority of the day, and I don't want him out. Mm. Well, that's true. Just, yes, yes, yeah, but so, you just buy the body from him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just let me buy that. And you got any big ones, really big ones? We need to have a lot of meat. Right. Anyway, I guess that's still something useful. So Ab Abbott finds the best prices for spell surfaces, I guess. And okay. sp specifically, clerics are willing to ask no questions and still raise the dead. Raise the dead, and mm. to be fair, they don't need to ask no questions. 
this person was killed by this gang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tragically. Yes. And why do you care and why are you footing the bill? Uh, what, what happened reasons? to him? Reasons. <laughs> uh, friend. Yeah. Just say, what happened to him? He fell on some stairs. He has 27 stab wounds. It was a lot of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> stairs made of really sharp. Well, <laughs> I'm going to put it on that he's looking into commissioned magic services. Okay. Is that everyone? Yeah. What's well, commissioned magic services? Okay. Uh, yeah, because Doomsday is working on that. Uh, Steve's looking into etiquette classes, uh, and, like, basically finding out the local etiquette and finding someone maybe who can help you with that. Molly's looking into the leadership structure of the Balanced Blade, and Hammerstein's looking into the, uh, social calendars for the nobles for this season. Uh, Abbott's looking into, uh, prices for raising the dead. Mm-hmm. And this is Monday. And Spartacus maps. Spartacus uh, already gave you the maps. For the Balanced Blade area? That's what he was working on last time. I didn't know if he was still working on Oh, that. yeah. I didn't give you that. Uh, he gave you uh, a connect a uh, topographical map for the most part. Like, it doesn't have every side street, but it has the main uh, pathways and things of that nature. Oh, okay, for the balance blade area? Yeah. So you have a general idea. It's enough to let you guys roll with advantage on uh, survival checks to move through that part of the city. Mm. It's been 20 minutes just trying to look that over and memorize it. Okay. Before I head out for my day. Yeah, I'll have a look over the map uh, as well. Okay, so you and uh, uh, Maribel have been... It's been about a 20 minutes to a half an hour uh, looking through the map and getting a good idea of what it is. Do we have... I will do the same thing. We have top graph, coal, and sewers for slums. Do we have... Top and they're linked. Yeah. yeah. Do we have top graph, coal, and sewers for a red horse? Uh... You have a couple of paths through the sewers, but they're not, you don't have a map for it. They're marked in the sewers mm. that there's a path to areas. So there's thieves' camp markings in the sewers. Okay. Mm. As opposed to an actual map. I guess, you know, if we don't have anything else for them to do, at least a top graphical map with Red Horse. As we sit there and connect, we're eventually going to have a big city map. Given that they just don't have that. <laughs> well, you don't have that. There's, of course, the uh, tour guide who makes large maps and books about areas. Oh, yeah. We also have a topographical map of the Wharf District. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, with uh, all of the inns and bars in it and their ratings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, it's- as no, far as something for Spartacus to do. I don't know. Ask him to go try to buy that body? <laughs> no, that's not something that he needs to be doing. Okay. Um, I remember also, it's not him directly doing into the yeah. but, um It's just, I heard you had a body. Can I buy it from you? <laughs> I have reasons. Um, Spartacus, right now, something that uh, I started on is that I've been trying to go around to crafters in order to convince them to come to the church so that I'd be able to uh, get a gauge of them and see if they might be potential assets to the gang in the future. Um... Well, one of the things that I wanted to ask is, is there... Anything from your perspective uh, that people that I would want to also be doing this for as far as like helping you out with any resources that would help facilitate the growth and strength of the game? A blacksmith would help quite a bit. Uh, That's what I was A uh, farrier wouldn't be too awful either. We could start working on getting an actual stable of horses and carts and things of that nature, especially as we expand, might be useful. Okay. Right now, 
uh, my current lieutenant's a cartographer. That's what she spends most of her time doing. We do keep it, did keep asking him for a lot of maths. <laughs> yeah, he went and hired himself one. Yeah. Okay. Um, along the lines of Clarier, we even managed to take over an area where some of them operate out of, because there are a number available for hire, and yeah, having a service that's already operating just under our control could all... I have a decent-sized budget if you want me to hire a farrier, but I don't think it's large enough to buy a business outright. No, but, I mean, as we make our way, perhaps where they operate out of... Uh, well, there's one here, specializes in draft animals and the like. There's one in the Horse's Head district as well that does uh, mainly transportation taxiing services, things of that nature. It's what they work on their horses, make sure their shoes are up to date and things of that like that. Um, I believe there's one in the Bounds Blades district as well. Huh? As part of one of the blacksmithies? We don't even know who other than the Blades themselves is in control over there, do we? Nope. Hmm. How careless. Oh, we haven't been focusing on it. I didn't mean you. <laughs> Though you too, but I, not specifically. <laughs> She's done a wonderful job mapping. Yeah. Quite useful. Good. Her maps were very well done. <laughs> apparently. Wonderful. <laughs> As his cartographer looked at it and said, These are very well done. I will pass that along. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we do, do, do need to know the lay of the land. I need some herbs, charcoals, incense. Is there somewhere local I could pick that up? I could have it sent to your rooms. Or if you would prefer to go shopping. Yes, there is. Yeah, that uh, seems quicker than writing it down. <laughs> would you like me to grab you a runner? You no said that you're going to stay in your rooms and keep your other half in there as well. Yes. Um, I could have a runner dedicated to you. You just got to call him from the uh, inn itself. Not at this time, although I may end up needing that at a certain point. But You can't cut them up, you understand. I don't pay them enough for that. Not you. Your other half. Yes. Don't torture them. Though, it is hilarious to insist that everything is alphabetical. Uh, I honestly, the price, is there a price from where that's acceptable? Yes. Of course. <laughs> it, it tends to be says, a wonderful family man who can't keep his family fed who has that price, but they have it. <laughs> everything has a price. <laughs> How much do you think your fingers were? Just a little one. Barely use it anyways. Hold on. It, is Steve still in the room? Yes. Can I see my contract? He hands it to you. Flip through and... Okay, losses of body parts. How much do I get paid? Not <laughs> we will attempt to re reattach them. Yep. <laughs> there is a attempt to in reattach fact, them. In fact, I, you are required to allow. <laughs> yes, and it, it says... Uh, uh, if it could not be found, or, we can find a substitute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it says original or suitable substitute. Uh, suitable is notated. If you flip three pages down, it says suitable according to Dr. Richter. Yeah, so evidently, my little finger's worth, I have to be more horrible than mutilated. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's unmutilating. No. Yeah, fix it. I'm so glad I eventually get access to regeneration. <laughs> Think about it. Then we can actually turn you into a farm. I throw a roll at Mary. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no Lambert. I mean, uh, it's like uh, one a day, right? Roll with uh, just dex. <laughs> That's like one a day, right? Natural yeah. 20. Yeah, it hit you in the horn. It's stuck there. You have a, like an eclair stuck on your head. <laughs> There's some like uh, cream running down your face. Lob speed. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go spy on some Smiths. I'll see you guys later tonight. <laughs> so you are valued. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> once, you, once that revenue stream's open up even more. 
Uh, I would be interested in finding some other places that we could make a similar deal with as the Gilded Garden, since we're getting regular payments from them. Perhaps a farrier could align some sort of similar... Well, it, it, isn't that literally Looking just a protection racket we would set up again in the hor Headless Horse area? Where we threaten them if they don't pay us, and they pay us a little bit, and we leave them alone, mm -hmm. and protect them from the balance blades? Yeah. Uh, what, uh, as far as like scouting, another place that we can do that with. Yeah. I guess if Jake gets done with whatever he is, he could check out the stuff near the edge of the balance blades thing. Jake is currently trying to murder people. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Which is cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, eventually we can check out businesses on the border and see if they're getting attacked enough by the balance blades that we can offer them protection for a price. Because mm -hmm. that's the big thing we end, we give the uh, gilded. I just want to express another reason why keeping the two names separate could be advantageous. Yeah. Because having... An the, adversarial role yeah, on the other the side. The horse's head protecting people from the balanced blades, and the balanced blades protecting people from the horse's head. And both of them under our control. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Gives them only so much work to do of what? making it seem like they're still needed. Uh, what are the. Speaking of what Jake's up to, what are the three of you doing today? I'm going to scout out that smithy again, see if I can spot any keys or their pattern. Because they have to have some stuff, so hope to get a score. And then uh, more study. Delving into um, spell research. Mm -hmm. I would like to uh, extend my ability to maintain uh, appearances. Well. Something that I want to know, at least uh, suggest uh, to maybe be a plan for a future day, is that uh, we've been told by Molly that we've got uh, some enhanced activity over in the slum sewers. That seems like a acceptable place to allow the doctor to visit. I could take him there. If well, if you need our assistance, it's not that we're unable or unwilling, it's just a caution in where it is applied. Well, the thing is is that uh, as far as we have information, we actually probably know the slums over there a little bit better than they do, at least at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's like who knows if they spent the time to fully map it out like we have. Now, since they, they've got a bit more activity going on there, and we know the sewers better than they do, we might be able to set up ambushes and take out some of Gustav's boys. I mean, if you're willing to do that today, I could put my thing off. Does it, it doesn't really have a time limit besides it giving us more cash. It's like, I hope to get a payday to maybe pick up a bag of holding. Mm. And it's like, and I do see whatever, uh, getting into whatever their stores is and then filtering that through Spartacus to be a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we could go over there and see if we can, as a group, ambush yeah, a gang in the sewers. Yeah, if we get uh, whatever, the four of us and uh, Jake and his boys to go out, because he's already taken out some of the lookouts, so we, we he might have uh, been able to clear a pathway for us to get in without... Uh, triggering any of them. Well, we can go in from our sewers. That too. Like, I have the place I usually go in. It's like, from what I know, if they stuff here near the soup kitchens, like, pull up the other map and it's like, flip back and forth between the two. Mm -hmm. It's like, here would be a great ambush place. But yeah, it's not like Gustav's gonna have unlimited men. I'm willing to go today. Yeah, if ever, if we choose not today, if you're able to advise me the day before, uh, I can avoid 
arriving in the morning here and expending the effort needed to shift. Yeah. Well, how are you feeling about today? I don't think I rolled. Hold on, did I roll? No, I didn't roll. I, that's yesterday's rolls. Eighteen. Seventeen. Pretty good. <laughs> Fairly good. What do you think, Mary? Do you want to uh, poke some holes in some fellas? I mean, yeah. And it's the sewers. Very little flammable. Fireball Central. Yeah, uh, it's true. We've already established that. Did you start doing your uh, arcane research yesterday? Mm-hmm. Okay. I need a uh, <laughs> medicine and an arcanum check from you. Okay. Arcanum. Yes. <laughs> the ability, are you looking for a new spell or just the ability to upcast alter self? I, I am fine with however it ends up working out. Um, I guess the way that I'm starting by going about it is to give an upcast option to alter self. Make it longer. But, yeah. Um, I wonder, so you said the first one was medicine... Um, 18 for medicine and then arcana is garbage do I get to alter the roll after after you roll it? no No. Okay. Uh, and that was yesterday I know but yesterday a 6 is actually better than what I rolled and I had a 6 yesterday <laughs> no you gotta, you gotta know before you roll <laughs> It's intelligent. Twelve. Okay. So you begin your path of research. Okay. Yeah, the important is before you roll, not one of those uh, before you know the result. Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to remember. Because that's like, think like lucky is before you know the result. Right. I uh, put down here some notes for that. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I guess. If yep, yeah, that's lucky. Yeah. Before you know the result. I guess this is the kind of campaign where we could actually train skills, isn't it? Eventually. I mean, you work really hard at it. I mean, yeah. At least there's just flat out rules for training um, languages, languages and, and tools and yeah. all that. You, you certainly can. Hmm. Hmm. And at the very least, you have an RP reason to take investigation if you wanted to. Yeah, that, that is my current thing. Is we would have to capture three areas before I could do it, but take a feat in the future to, you know, take uh, take the skill, then expertise the skill. <laughs> and that's what you want to do. That's what I do. Okay, so it is uh, Monday. Yeah. Uh, after the meeting, after the map studying. So are we... Day walking? What, what are you guys doing? So are we doing the thing? Yes, the day is yours. Well, I'm willing to do it. Do we want to do it right now or after his day walk? No. Oh, um, well, he didn't do anything yesterday, so it's not even like he's down any resources. He hmm. would just have to go walking at a different point in time. Yeah. Yeah, you don't really hit exhaustion levels until you get, like, at 20 hours awake. Yep. 24 hours on long rest. Yeah, and it's like, so, I mean, I'm good to go. Yeah. I point out on the map a good place for ambush, and we can go set up there. So, like I said, so yeah, uh, I literally have the next... Before we break uh, the meeting, uh, confirm with Molly where in the sewers she was noticing the activity as best she can, and... Uh, she didn't notice one specific location in the sewers. She just noticed that more people were coming in and out of sewers when she was watching Gustav. Okay. So around Gustav's. Yeah. Is where she's noticed, like, there was some activity which is an increase. Mm -hmm. compared to And obviously people. that means it's somewhere else as well, because it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, so probably around the soup kitchen and maybe around his house, maybe other places. Yeah, those were two places she didn't know is the house and the soup kitchen because he doesn't really go a whole lot of other places. Yeah, and so it's like those are the places that she would have most likely seen it. So. Very well. Um, how long is the 
events of the morning meeting taken more or less usually, than an hour. Usually, usually a little bit longer. This one in particular, a little bit longer than an hour. But usually about an hour. Meetings at nine. Usually, I assume that by ten, you guys have done what you intend to do. Yeah. And, and I guess we'll be taking Jake with us. Yeah, you can take Jake. Yeah, Jake and whatever boys he think would be good to bring on this ambush mission. How many do you want? Uh, how many have you been using to go take out random... Uh, none. Oh, so just Jake's one. Hmm. Yeah, Jake's just been going and, like, grabbing people. Like a snake. <laughs> Struck it from the dark. How many do we have on the, the gang? Uh, 40... It's like, I don't know, just like a couple. Pretty like five, yeah. Yeah. Um, Nope, the real key is to go level two fighter, level one any wizard or sorcerer. Because five doubles our numbers. Even if they're of the lower degree, gives a better show. Because, what was it? Some of our top dudes are like barbarian. Um, yeah, there yeah, we don't need to, 42 gang members currently. Yeah, we don't need to risk any risk any of the upper tiers. The, the top tier, but mid or lower. Yeah. So I, I was thinking just grabbing a couple rogues. So, yeah. That's what we've got. That works for me. Okay, so you're going to take Jake and a couple rogues into the sewers? Mm-hmm. Five what? rogues. <laughs> what, five? He said he wanted to double our numbers. Yeah. Okay. So Jake and five rogues, or five ro- mm-hmm. four rogues and Jake? Jake and five rogues, because with Jake there's five of us, mm-hmm. and then five, five, rogues. five lower people that are kind of expendable. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> one, ah, a red shirt for each of us. Yeah. <laughs> one, one rogue per... <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but... Uh, one rogue per person. Wow, ah, good old a blade of plot armor. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rogues will have their javelins. Do they have any bows or anything like that, or... Just what we've equipped them with so far. Uh, they have what you have equipped them with. Okay. I forget. We gave them each like six javelins and a mace or something. No. Yeah. You would have that written down. I would. <laughs> hey, javelins are good weapon. Yeah. And the rogues wouldn't be having a mace. It may have been a short sword. I have no idea. Or m- maybe we went the other way and just equipped everyone with spears because they also have a throwing distance. I forget. Seems like something we do. Uh, you got 49 spears and 196 javelins. Yeah, okay. We we want yeah. with spears and yeah. javelins. <laughs> thrown and thrown. So I guess you have 40... Oh, yep, you do have 49 members of your gang. Yeah, the javelins just have, the javelins have a pretty good range. Yeah. It's longer than the spears. But spears, everyone knows how to use them. Poke pokey is universal. Hey, maces aren't light. Light hammers are light. Mm-hmm. And can be thrown. The same distance as a spear. Are spears light? Uh, they are not. They are versatile. Mm. They can be wielded with two hands for a bigger hit dice. Or a bigger damage dice. But it means they won't have sneak attack with them? Correct. They are not light weapons, though. No. Nor and they, they, they are melee weapons, too. So they are not ranged weapons. Well, you get sneak attack with melee weapons, too. Yes, light or ranged. Light finesse or ranged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many spears and javelins? So you got 49 spears, 196 uh, like uh, javelins. Are javelins light? Or at least they're ranged. They're, they're ranged. ranged. Okay. But uh, well, they're actually ranged. no, they're melee. They, they can they're be ranged and melee. Yeah. yeah, they're they're yeah melee thrown weapons, which does not get them special sneak attack privileges because the rules are kind of silly. We might have to outfit the rogue slightly differently in the future <laughs> because they said need to be using like darts for ranged weapons. Well, light hammers evidently was the answer. Oh well, no, those are those are still melee. Yeah, you don't really have a lot of rogues as members of your gangs. Most of the gangs at the Horses Head were fighters. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, they're sneakier fighters, but they're not rogues. Oh, okay. Well, then that's what I guess we're taking them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess we'll be, they're, they're, there's more dexterous 
fighters out there. But oh, yeah, there it is. Not. Yeah, it's not even light. It's must use a finesse or ranged weapon. So light is irrelevant. <laughs> light offhand. Yeah, light's yeah. for offhand two weaponing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the uh, whatever bonus action, second attempt, it makes it. <laughs> yeah. So we just have some more Dexy fighter members of mm-hmm. the gang joining us. That's fine. Well, action surge instead of that, or they may all have thug stat block. Who knows? Mm. No, I said not. They're already fighters. Just have them take like a level or two in a, in a casting class so they can get magic missile and just double dump that on somebody's face. <laughs> I mean, you certainly can if you'd like to pay for yeah. the training. I mean, why bother with training? We're going to just have them sign some contracts. Because your contracts have no power. Yes, but we can have somebody that gives power. We can find somebody else. I mean, buy it. you can try. You can certainly try. But apparently, the ones you have no power. Uh, let's see, finesse daggers. So yeah, so you, you're going in there with uh, five members of the gang and uh, Jake and you five. So there's ten people going into the source. Yes. Okay. Uh, survival or stealth checks? To you literally made the map. Yeah. You're good. Okay. If you're leading them, they don't have you. You know where you're going. Okay. Uh, however, and we enter from within our district to head in from there. Uh, yeah. I don't want to be too much longer until both king retires. Good wood comes out. They have different focus. Yep. Yeah, I have a crystal focus for. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Uh, his character is really, really cool. I like the way you did it. <laughs> I made two characters with one stat set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we talked about it a little bit beforehand, and I really like the idea. It's very cool. Okay. So you all descend into the sewers, mm-hmm. into darkness. No. Into darkness. I, I make sure to disguise myself before. Uh, that is the one. Anyone have? Can we just use some torches. Does anyone have the light spell? I can see. <laughs> yes. Well, some of us can. Oh, you you have. A, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Some of them are human. <laughs> Punters can't see in the dark. They're diurnal. <laughs> I don't care that they live in tunnels. Still diurnal. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. man, I don't have dark vision either. Yeah. I am the only person with dark vision. <laughs> Neither does There's Jake. also little <laughs> tiles that you can lay out that say sewers there. That's what you're going for. One of the boxes. What? Uh, Lorne Dungeon City, Forest Dungeon, Urban. Wait, just ask him. Goodness gracious. Are you sure you set this up to be helpful to me? I said it to be helpful to me. So, yeah, not really. Good lord. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, okay. Oh, the, okay. I don't know what those have. But <laughs> that's wilderness. Yeah, I do not know what the D&D tiles have. Those are not the ones yeah, I, I usually not use. Okay. I am, as per usual, just grabbing one, being like, I will use the map, and oh. just say it doesn't look like that, though. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay, so. Oh, oh good lord. They're tiles. They are tiles. Yeah, like I said, I don't use the D&D tiles. I use the Pathfinder tiles. <laughs> because the Pathfinder D&D tiles are sheets. chaos. <laughs> yeah, D&D tiles require a hell of a lot more planning than I'm uh-huh. apparently capable of. Yep, nope. D&D tiles, I decided, were more effort than uh, Dwarven Forge, actually. Uh, so why use them? <laughs> because they're probably a heck of a lot cheaper. Yeah, but now I own Gordon Forge. <laughs> yes, that doesn't help me at all. Excellent. Okay, so what we're going to do is it is going to be a number of... We have theater of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'll, I'll figure something out. But it's going to be a number... Of, we don't have enough time to do a battle this yeah. time anyways. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... It'll be a really quick battle. Just a real swift one. <laughs> Dude, we, st- work. We, we stretched the break into two entire sessions. The uh, escape and then failed. It. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and do a perception check for me. Whoever, uh, one of you gets to helmet with one of you assisting if you wish. Probably assisting me? Yeah. We'll all assist you. Mm-hmm. 
It gives you the same bonus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get super advantage. Which uh, is 24. what I should have done. <laughs> what? 24. 24. Okay. As you guys are walking along, you hear the... <laughs> Battle music. I had a thing that was like sewers. I guess. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I don't use a bow because I'm not pushing. I know, but you're. <laughs> it's the best I could get, man. The best command. It's like I, I, I'm also not a dagger wielding bunny, but I am also not a absolutely uh, unusable. a vampire Un- spot. Unusable, <laughs> absolutely unusable. I don't know, did you not, you know, <laughs> free glance one out for Brian? He doesn't have any he doesn't have any Buddhas. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Which Ryan does. Mm. Almost certainly. Alright, you know what? I will figure it out for next time because it's kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Short episode this week, sorry about that guys, but I don't want to start a uh You'll just have to go to the observatory to find this combat. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. this combat sponsored by the observatory. So, yes, thanks for uh, joining us. Like, comment, subscribe, stick around, and check out other items on this channel before you move on to the observatory, where I no longer get to say this part. Actually, what I'll say is, go over to Jade Guy and Gaming. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, thanks for joining us. Have a beautiful evening. See ya.